While I was in Las Vegas for the DEF CON CTF, Niklas from Eat Sleep Pwn Repeat asked me about the real world CTF qualification, but I had no clue. Apparently my team qualified for the finals and I didn't even know. You see, we are very well organized. This real world CTF seemed a bit weird, it kinda came out of nowhere, it promised $100,000 for the first place in the finals, but the price was also in USDT, a cryptocurrency which is basically bound to the US dollar. It was a Chinese CTF by this company Chai Ten Tech, but the challenges were actually really cool and they were based on real world applications. Most notable was probably the P90 Rush B challenge where a CSGO map parsing bug had to be exploited. So for a while it was unclear if the finals will still happen as we didn't hear much about it anymore. But suddenly we got the invitation to come to Zhengzhou, China to participate in the Real World CTF Finals 2018 on the 1st and 2nd of December. Our team met up in Frankfurt, Germany to fly together to Hong Kong and then continue to Zhengzhou. On the first flight, one teammate figured out a crazy combination of steps to crash the in-flight system, which is based on Android. It leads to crashing the QT5 pack launcher. Screen goes black and eventually it restarts. On IMAX at the Hong Kong airport where you can surf the internet, you are supposed to only use this tool here. But again, a teammate found out a way to escape the program and gain access to the underlying operating system. You can tell I was traveling with hackers. Anyway, we arrived later in the day in Zhengzhou and unfortunately the weather was not great. Organizers actually warned us of the air quality. While it looked kinda sad and grey during the day, the fog or the pollution looked actually really awesome at night. It really had a cyberpunk flair. We were staying in this huge skyscraper hotel on floor 40 something next to a lake and a convention center where the CTF was going to be. So once we got settled we decided to walk around and see some stuff. And we couldn't believe our eyes. There were these big posters about the real world CTF and pointing into the direction where it would be. Oh wow this seemed a bit more serious than we thought it would be. We walked a bit further and then we saw this. At the convention building there was a huge banner with real world CTF and all the team names. And a crazy looking entrance. What is going on? What is this crazy event? Because I only had a crappy phone here are some pics from the next day. This is crazy, there is our name. This is not what we expected. Who the F would be watching us? This is just a CTF, we are not like eSports fun to watch. So the next day was the start of the CTF and this was the first time we walked into the CTF area. What the F is this? Well, yeah, so this looked crazy. Each team had a cool table with our team names and logos on it. We felt not at all prepared for this level of professionalism. You would think we would prepare a lot for the huge prices, but be real, we have no chance against these other teams, we were just here to have fun. But if there's a next time I will still prepare more, this is insane. Around the CTF areas, a few sponsors had set up some marketing booths like Pangu Team, Kihu 360 and many more, but I never interacted with them. So we had about one hour to set up before the CTF starts and after we resolved all our networking issues, we were waiting for it to start. Countdown, 19 minutes. The CTF would go for two days, 1st and 2nd of December. And also the rules of the CTF were introduced to us. It's a Jeopardy style CTF, so very typical, but several challenges required demoing it on stage. For example, there was a challenge called Station Escape where you were given a minimally modified VMware binary, they patched something in order to introduce a vulnerability and then you had to exploit it and pop the calculator on stage. For example here RPISec exploited the host and executed the calculator and got first blood. There were some browser exploitation, some web challenges, 
even doing some car hacking on stage. Oh, and each team got a camera as well as a router and both of them were challenges. You had to hack into the router and you also had to find a way to access and control the camera without authentication. So they were really cool challenges. If you want to know what I did during the CTF, well, I can tell you I did the whole thing. In fact, I spent both days, including the nighttime, on the blockchain challenge Akuraida Monica. I have done quite a bit of smart contract stuff this year and I thought, F yeah, this is my challenge, no problemo, easy points. Gosh, I was wrong. This challenge was crazy hard and I did make progress, slow but progress, and thus I never gave up. Of course, in retrospect, I should have spent my time on something else for points, but I actually learned so much more about Ethereum smart contract internals. It was so useful to me. I'm so blown away by this challenge and I definitely want to make a video talking about it. However, our team did solve a challenge and that was the router. They were actually rushing it because demos on stage take time and the end of the CTF was nearing, each team had to register for a spot for demoing it. So we registered without having a working exploit. And literally 5 minutes before the end, the exploit worked. A super quick test run was done to see if it works and they rushed onto stage. With 3 minutes left on the clock, Team Alice was the last team to win a flag. Our only flag. But we were so damn proud. Holy shit! Overall, the CTF was super hard. We were five people and I was sucked into a single challenge, so kinda only four people. Other teams, especially the ones that were in the top, had actually more people helping offside over the internet, which is totally fine and allowed. Our team just doesn't have that many dedicated players. So I feel like this CTF would have been perfect for a team of like 8 to maybe 10 people. I think that would have been the sweet spot. 5 was too low and 20 or so would be too much. On average, one day per challenge would have been nice. Oh, and just in case you wonder, solving a single challenge was still pretty good. The final scoreboard looked like this. Actually, a team asked me to censor their zero points because they felt so embarrassed, so I hide it here. But they shouldn't feel embarrassed. It was a really hard CTF and everybody should be proud to even have qualified. While the stage and light effects and demos was awesome, it was a bit of a bummer that almost nobody celebrated it. Very rarely people would clap or cheer for successfully popped calcs on stage. LCBC was probably the happiest on stage for pointing a challenge. Oh, <laughs> But with every demo we saw, I was hoping that the room would burst out into claps and cheers. So this is a call to my fellow CTFers. Come on, let's celebrate these awesome hex more. Let us show people that this is awesome. One other thing I would like to mention was how weird it was to have all those guards there. And at the entrance there were x-ray machines for bags and pat-downs. I don't know if these guards were police or just security, but there were not just a few at the entrance. They were standing just meters apart and they were standing there for hours. I felt so bad for them. That must have been so boring. There was even a large group patrolling with riot shields and sticks and stuff every few hours or so. I think they were supposed to protect us and make us feel safe and make sure nothing bad happens. But to be honest, I felt more threatened by it. It was really weird. One other interesting cultural observation I had was smoking. So apparently smoking was banned inside of places or so just a few years ago, but people just kinda ignore it. Or well, they hide in the toilet. So every time you go to the bathroom, there are people and employees just hanging out and smoking. I'm somebody who really likes a clean, quiet, empty bathroom and this was a bit irritating. Other than that, nothing weird happened. Everybody was super nice to us and we were put into a nice hotel. And breakfast was awesome, they even apologized constantly when small things went not quite right and the organizers in general made us feel very welcome. It was a really well organized and great event. Kudos for that. 
On the day after the CTF, when the winners were clear, there was a small conference with an award ceremony. This is where we got a small glimpse into day-to-day -day Chinese politics. They even had live translators for us. I don't remember who exactly spoke, but there were several important people there and I think it was like the mayor and some ministers or so, just talking about the importance of security and that the government has to invest more into this and support IT security education and this real world CTF was part of this. This was a competition in IT security on a high level in order to motivate young people to go into this field and also position China as being cutting edge in IT security. Or actually it was less about China as a whole and more about the region itself. You know, China is huge and they were often just talking about the Henan province which has even a bigger population than Germany. And the city, Zhengzhou, where we were, is almost three times bigger than Germany's capital city, Berlin. So of course, for a local politician, it's more about positioning Zhengzhou as a hub for IT companies. This is where talent is and where the real world CTF finals happened. They want their economy to prosper. So of course, this is all about marketing and economics. But it was just really fascinating to not just hear about global political news, but get a small glimpse into this day-to-day -day boring local politics. And the marketing was really crazy. After the CTF, they even got multiple pages in a local newspapers ready for the next day. And so, thanks China, now I have to own a picture of Trump in order to keep this piece of memory of the real world CTF. I used Google Translate on my phone to read some lines in the newspaper, but it was a bit rough. The most powerful brain idol sports network offensive and defensive surgery. We also got some stickers, which of course have to go onto my laptop, and we got this metal challenge coin. You can tell I had a lot of fun there, and I was so glad that I went. I'm really looking forward to next year and hope we can qualify again. Thanks also to my teammates, I really enjoyed traveling and playing with you, and congratulations to LCBC217 and ESPR for rocking the CTF. And nice to meet so many new people and see familiar faces again.